Welcome to Big Cove Church. My name is Pastor Kim. It is a bright, sunshiny morning, although it is cold here. For those of you in other parts of the country, if you are experiencing snow right now, some of us from the north might be a little jealous. The others of us were not quite so sure. We're expecting snow here, maybe tomorrow, and so the anticipation is high and the grocery stores are full. We're beginning a new sermon series today, and it is called uh, Created Anew. It's talking about creation and creative ability. And we're really excited about it. We've got several lessons coming up. The first one is talking about creation itself and how we fit into that today. So uh, with all that eagerness, let us embrace the Lord. Good morning, everyone. I will be reading the call to worship to you this morning. As followers of Christ, we are called to bring a hopeful understanding of our world, declaring that God called the created universe good. At our beginning, God created us unique and irreplaceable, loved and wanted by God, known and treasured by God, even before he created us. In all our new beginnings, God creates something new in us, so we will seek God in the gr- excuse me, in the freshness of this morning, in the laughter of friends, in the colors of creation, and in this beautiful place as we join together in worship and praise. pray with me. Almighty God, your spirit swept over the waters of creation. You are sweeping over us now, creating something new. Call us away from the distractions of the world to experience what you are doing now in us and through us and in our world. Open us to a new awakening, a new beginning, where we look through the lens of the goodness of your creation experiencing all possibilities in you. Turn us away from the negative lens, Lord, and lead us to the light. Amen. comes a time in our service when we share with God. And how many of you remember these green slips of paper? So we put them, things we were sad about, things that worried us about how we became further away from God, we put them in the manger. And what I'd like to do is to bring them out today, and believe me, I will not make, I'll make sure that no one knows whose anyone's was, and I don't even know who they came from. But I thought what we could do is to pray over these, just pray over them, and I'll just say the words, and what I'd like you to do is just say, Lord, hear our prayer, after every one of these. Because these came from our heart, and I want to make sure we remember that these are things that are important to us. Okay, let us pray. 
Forgive us for our laziness. Forgive us for our sharp words. Forgive us for the lies we've told. Forgive us for not calling a friend in need. Forgive us for exhausting someone. Forgive us for our resentments. Forgive us for our worrying. Forgive us for not being faith-filled. Forgive us for not accepting things we needed to accept. Forgive us for not reaching out to friends when we needed to. Forgive us for our frustrations with our family. Forgive us for having bad thoughts about people we love. Forgive us for the mistakes we could make at work. Forgive us for not having humility. Forgive us for wanting to be in control and not having you in control. Forgive us for not being as empathetic as we needed to be. Forgive us for being frustrated with our children. Forgive us for not reaching out to our neighbors. Forgive us for our impatience. Forgive us when we are not humble with our spouse. Lord, hear our prayers and please forgive us. Amen. Psalm 29, and this is the message translation. Bravo, God, bravo. Gods and all angels shout encore in awe before the glory, in awe before God's visible power. Stand at attention, dress to your best to honor him. God thunders across the waters, brilliant his voice in his face, streaming brightness. God across the floodwaters, God's thunder tympanic, God's thunder symphonic, God's thunder smashes cedars, God topples the northern cedars. The mountain ranges skip like spring colts, the high ridges jump like wild kid goats, 
God's thunder spits fire. God thunders, the wilderness quakes. He makes the desert of Kadesh shake. God's thunder sets the oak trees dancing. A wild dance whirling, the pelting rain strips their branches. We fall to our knees. We call out, glory. Above the floodwaters is God's throne, from which his power flows, from which he rules the world. God makes his people strong. God gives his people peace. We'll go right from there into Genesis 1. It seems very appropriate. When God began creating the heavens and the earth, the earth was a shapeless, chaotic mass, and with the Spirit of God brooding over the dark vapors. Then God said, let there be light, and light appeared, and God was pleased with it, and divided the light from the darkness. He called the light daytime, and the darkness nighttime. Together they formed the first day. The word of the Lord. In July, for several years in a row, Ralph and I made the trip to Michigan for a very special event, the Ann Arbor Art Fair. Now, in order to do it justice, I'm going to read its headline to you. The Ann Arbor Art Fair is a Midwest tradition that draws close to half a million attendees, half a million attendees, over three days in July, the largest juried art fair in the nation. The Ann Arbor Art Fair features nearly a thousand artists and a footprint spanning 30 city blocks in downtown Ann Arbor. Huge, right? Here are a few pictures of the event. Half a million people, lots of art, lots of talent. Notice the juried sign? Because everything was juried and voted on. This kind of gives you an idea. That's the Michigan Student Union. Every square inch of space was used. Look at the crowds. Now this one, (laughs) his art was a piano. And it was on a platform that he pulled around on a bicycle. It was really fun. And he pulled it around to different parts, you know, and he played the piano on the bicycle. It was just really interesting. And, And walking around the University of Michigan campus and looking at all the art, my brain felt like it was in delightful overload. I was so amazed at the variety of mediums that I saw. I'll give you a few examples. Ceramic, oils, woodworking, glass, textiles, watercolors. I'm sure I'm forgetting a lot more. And what would impress me the most about the art fair is the creative energy that it produced. I mean, people were interested in the art for the art itself, yes. But many were also gathering creative ideas. They were looking at their own creative blank canvases and asking themselves the question, what if? The psalm today that was read from the message translation was really creative. I love the part where the mountain ranges skip like spring colts, or God's thunder sets the oak trees dancing wildly. God's creative action became alive in that passage. Listen to part of the Genesis passage again, this time in the message translation. First this, God created the heavens and earth. All you see, all you don't see. Earth was a soup of nothingness, a bottomless emptiness, an inky blackness. God's spirit brooded like a bird above the watery abyss. Isn't that imagery fantastic? A God creating, yes, but it's if, as if God's creativity is shining as well. God created. God created us in his chaos. God created using his creativity by giving us unique talents and unique abilities. So here's a question for you. When do you feel the most creative? When do you feel the most creative? Just call it out. When do you feel the most creative? Morning? At night. night. You're a night girl, yes. Early. Early. What else? When When you're doing PowerPoint, yes, that is very true. Sometimes I have to go through them and go, oh my goodness. (laughs) Any other times? I I feel that way, I mean, any time of the day. Any time of the day. You get those creative energies? Depends on what's going on that day. Depends on what's going on. Okay, so it could be any time of the day. All right. 
That's good. And now I've got another question for you. Let's say you were given a blank canvas or a blank slate, and the canvas could be real, like for painting, or it could be metaphorical, like a piece of cloth, a garden bed, a book with blank pages, an empty car with no engine, an empty dance floor with music. So the question is, what kind of blank canvas would inspire you? An empty garden. An empty garden. Okay. A nice piece of cherry wood. A nice piece of cherry wood. <laughs> or walnut, you look at it and go, oh, what could I create with that? Okay, that's good. Anybody else? Something that needs fixing, that is true. He can fix anything, anything. He even took the magnetron out of our microwave. Who takes the magnetron out of our microwave and replaces it? He does. Anything I can upcycle. Anything you can upcycle? Yes, like if it's been used and you want to make it new. That's good. That's a good platform. Anybody else? What would the blank, ca what is it? An empty room, yeah, because you've got that creative designer brain. That's true. And I bet you Sarah in the back, I'm calling on you, Sarah. I bet you Sarah in the back, when you see a piece of music, like a score, an empty score, do you get excited? Oh, yes, I knew she would. She's a definitely a creative spirit that way. Good answers, good thinking about this creative energy. One of my favorite seasons of my life was when I volunteered for Girl Scout camp, Camp Tuckerman. My name was Chicopee, which is Algonquian for water. And I lived in the nature unit. I was responsible for taking over 100 girls through the woods, uh, exploring, or into the stream for stream studies. The kids were so eager to learn and absorb the lessons we taught them. And the staff, oh, I had some great friends. We got muddied together. We made projects together. We raised our kids together. We laughed. We cried together. Being at camp was a bit like being on a desert island. It was kind of surreal like being on another planet. And we even had themes every year. And one year, our themes was fairy, fairies. So Monday afternoon, after a long day at camp, we went home to return on Tuesday morning, and we walked into our nature unit, and I couldn't believe what greeted us in the nature unit, a real-life fairy den. It was amazing. It was like a miniature dollhouse in the woods, every single item in the house and in the yard of the house had been created with pieces of nature. Twigs, mosses, acorns, and their caps, lichens, bits of feathers. We were just shocked, and it was so beautiful. And the woman who created it, and it took us a long time to figure out who it was, that was a mystery. Her name was Snickers. She was a camp counselor there. She was an artist, and she did miniatures. That was her specialty. So her blank canvas was the woods and the pieces of nature in the woods. When God created, God had a blank slate, a void, a blank canvas on which to create. Everything was new. We were new. The other creatures were new. And it was declared good. And because of that blank canvas, we have an opportunity right now. We've entered the start of a new year. It's kind of like facing a challenge. There's a blank canvas set out in front of us, and we have no idea what the year will bring us. We have no idea if we're facing difficult times or incredibly happy times. The canvas is ours to create that space with God's help. After all, God created us and all those other creatures, even snakes and spiders, out of the black void, out of chaos. Then God was so interested in wanting to know what we were experiencing he was interested in how we live, what we feel, and what we do, that he came to us in the person of Jesus Christ to walk like we walk. God continues to want to be a part of creation beside and in and through us. Did you know that Big Cove is facing a creative new project? With Latham's help, I wrote a grant proposal called the Front Porch Project. Do you remember our front porch series? In the series, we talked about how in our new world, one that's rapidly changing, it's no, we no longer have front porches to connect with our neighbors. Front porches were the way society operated for centuries. It was a way to be inside someone's home, right, without ever really getting in the door. 
a way to experience the love of neighbor to neighbor on the safety of a front porch. We talked about how the world's changing and how our porches now have become patios and decks on the back of the house with fences to secure our privacy. So in response to the changing world, our church that's eager to adapt to the new world that God is in has asked this question. How can we share the gospel to a world that is at home? How do we do that? Well, our new front porch can be online and digital, where the people are. To follow the Great Commission, to live into our vision that God has called us to, Big Cove Church seeks to meet the people where they are, intentionally have conversations, and serve virtual lemonade. And the grant has several components to it. An online worship service with a chat room for building relationships. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube connections made through short video clips. Podcasts online and theology on tap in person on topics of hot interest. Website upgrades. Guest speakers for webinars on current topics of interest. And tech and AV upgrades so that we can do all this. We're asking the North Alabama Presbytery to listen to the needs of our community and to grant us the funding to be able to reach those people who need to find God, perhaps even from their own living rooms. You see, the world outside the church doors is an empty black canvas. We know a few things, trends and demographics, but what we want to do for the kingdom of God here and now is to produce a virtual front porch so that God's love can reach even those who might never step inside a church. The energy in which God created was tremendous, incredible, and astounding. The energy that God asks us to use to create new ways for a kingdom to shine and grow is equally astounding. Life has taught me something recently, and Jeff and I have been, been talking about this. Life is so short, friends. It's so unpredictable. It's unpredictable. We need to seize every ounce of creativity we have and plunge into the world around us with passion and love. God gives us life so we might help others live through relationship with them. The Ann Arbor Art Fair and the amazing Fairy Doll House in the Woods are simple examples of how our creative energy can be used for good. Think of the happiness these types of creative projects bring to people. How we can bring love and hope to people through our individual creative energies, yes, and we can initiate and restore relationship. Our hope here at Big Cove is this grant that we have created will catapult us into the next century with the right technology and the right amount of blank canvas or blank slate through chaos to allow us to reach lives. After all, fairy houses can be real in the middle of the woods. Why can't a Zoom forum on fairies and God be real? I think that God has given us a blank slate or a blank canvas for our own personal lives. 2024 and blank canvas for our church as we enter into the new year. What do you see on that canvas? What new venture are you ready to step into in 2024? I heard a lot of creative things and energy around that. Can you ask yourself the question, what if? Amen. Now comes the time in our service for prayers view online. If you would like to join us in prayer, we'd love to have you. You are part of this family. Diane Lee, I believe you're out there. Kay Hanks, you're out there. And we're just saying a few words of prayer now. If you want to join into that prayer and you have special prayer requests, please send them to me, pastor.bigcovechurch at gmail.com. I'd be happy to pray with you. Let us pray. God, as we live into your creation, we realize that it must have been an amazing feat to take that blank canvas and create what you have. I like to think of the microscopic cells that were created to bring forth all kinds of life. And even now, we're still discovering, God, things we didn't even know at the depths of the oceans, in the heights of the mountains, 
in the bottom of caves, life we didn't even know existed, and we're finding out the interconnection between our species, even trees and fungi, and our ability to communicate with primates. It is unbelievable, Lord, what you began and what we're still learning. Help us, each one of us, to embrace in 2024 these blank canvases that are set out in front of us. Lord, you have designed us to create. You have designed us to be in relationship. Help us to find clever ways to be able to connect with others, maybe even through a medium that appeals to us that you have given us the creativity to do because it's all about us connecting, oh God. It's all about relationship. And we ask that you put your loving hands on this front port project and move it through, oh God, to those who need to, need to hear it. We know there are those at home that need you and we'd like to find ways to reach them. And this is an opportunity for our church to be able to move forward in a way we really haven't branched out into before. And we'd like your blessing on that and to spread that blessing to those who are looking at that grant proposal. Lord, we ask that you give our members, Hartwell and his whole family and Pat's family, some peace and the knowledge that Pat is with you, O oh God, and the comfort that they need. We ask that you do the same for our beloved Jeff, knowing that Sandra is with you, O oh God, and on some celestial beach right now, soaking up the rays. Lord, we ask that you be with every one of us, and particularly people who are in need right now. We're going to lift them up to you. We're going to lift up Joni and Debbie and Edwin and Carol and Brian and Jimmy and Jeff and Kay and Dawn and Kathy and Hartwell and Wayne and Tom and Kevin and Diane. Lord, we also lift up DJ and Andrew and Sheila and Bob and Shirley and Anne. Lord, be with us today as we continue to do your will and continue to look forward in 2024 for new ways to present creative energies. And who knows, God, you might even give us the opportunity tomorrow to make snow angels. It's possible. Lord, be with us as we pray your special prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, but give us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we leave one year behind and look with hope to the new year ahead, we lean on God to help us to live and give of ourselves as those who know every day that we have been given a great gift. May this revelation move us to give our whole selves more freely. At the back of the room, there is a box for our offerings and a box to support the Presbyterian Home for Children. For you at home, if you feel led by the Spirit to contribute to the mission and vision of Big Cove Church, please go to our website at www.bigcovechurch.org. Now let us share our gifts.
please pray with me. Oh God, we wonder at the beauty of your creation. We thank you for the sustenance of food and drink, and we cherish the love of family and friends. Lord, we offer these gifts to you with thankful hearts and joyous praise. As we give of our money and our resources, we surrender our whole beings to you in worship and adoration. Amen. Friends, if we haven't learned this yet, we need to stand up and learn it. God is good all the time. Let's stand. So next week I will be eager to hear, and you can email me too if you aren't from here, all the wonderful things you're thinking of that you can put on the blank canvas for 2024. Think two words, God is in it and relationship. What does that look like to you when you're creating? And now go friends knowing that you are loved by God, that you hold the light of God in you, and wherever you go, friends, shine the light. Amen.